If anybody out there is still wondering whether or not Donald Trump is a fascist and MAGA is a cult, consider this. Special counsel Jack Smith and a number of legal scholars across the political spectrum are currently pushing back hard on an argument from Trump's attorneys that, as a former president, Trump is entitled to absolute lifetime legal immunity for anything he said and did while he was in office, including if he ordered the National Guard to murder his critics, the FBI to plant evidence on his political opponents, taking bribes for government contracts, or even selling nuclear secrets to foreign adversaries. Trump thinks he's a king above the law. It's the most dangerous, unpatriotic, anti-American sentiment to come out of the MAGA movement, and we've got to talk about it because he is prepared to take it to the Supreme Court if need be. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. All right, folks, I have several clips for us to look at, several articles and tweets for us to look at as well. But this is with the possible exception of Trump previously breaking the 250-year-old tradition of the peaceful transfer of power established by President Washington. This right here coming from Trump and the MAGA cult is possibly the most insane authoritarian thing in American politics that we've ever seen. I'm going to first begin with a clip from a former prominent Republican leader. This is Paul Ryan. This is a guy who had the election in 2012 gone the other way, been the vice president of the United States and perhaps even president by now. Okay, This was a major Republican leader, former Speaker of the House. This is what he has to say about the current state of the Republican Party, just to set it up correctly. We have populism that has pervaded our party, that has taken over um, a big chunk, not all, but a big chunk of our party. It's what you think of as the Republican Party now. It's populism untethered to principle wrapped around the cult of personality of Donald Trump. And again, he would know, Paul Ryan would know, he was the Speaker of the House during Trump's presidency. He had to work with him very closely. This again, it's not just some schmuck off the street. This is a major conservative Republican leader. So we should probably care about what he says. And when he says it's become an unprincipled cult of personality, that carries weight. It should carry weight. And the clips and, and articles we're about to take a look at will only reaffirm it. I want to play two clips of Christina Bob, who is a close attorney of Donald Trump's. Um, this first clip is a bit different from the others because it talks about, um, you know, uh, the constitutional challenge to Donald Trump under the Fourteenth Amendment, which is not really the topic of this video, but it just goes to show where her mindset is and where Trump's mindset is. The president is elected by the entire nation, and it should be the entire nation who determines who they want for president, whether they're guilty of insurrection or not. It's up. So Christina Bob has the opinion that whatever the Constitution may or may not say in Section 3 of the 14th Amendment about you know whether or not an insurrectionist is eligible for the nation's highest office, it doesn't matter. We're a democracy. Setting aside the fact that Donald Trump has never won the popular vote and so in terms of majority rule and the people getting what they want, if that's the case, Donald Trump would never have been president in the first place. But now they're cherry picking when democracy matters. That aside, again, just to set the stage of how cultish this is, this is a more relevant clip from Christina Bob to the topic of this video about the notion that Donald Trump is entitled to absolute lifetime immunity. Sure. For the presidential immunity, um, I think I think that they should rule in favor of Donald Trump. Presidential immunity, immunity has been in play for the vast majority of our history. It's well established if the acts uh, committed, alleged in this indictment, are in the furtherance of his office in in accordance with uh, his political office he's immune from prosecution clearly as the president of the united states he believes that there was fraud in the election and he had a uh, constitutional obligation to try to secure the election and figure out what was going on so it, this is a very clear case he so Again, she's saying, listen, anything Donald Trump said and did while he was in office, if he believed it was in furtherance of that office's duties, which what they're talking about is the attempt to steal a free and fair election from the legitimate winner, Joe Biden. Listen, as a sitting president, he's the, the commander in chief. He's the head of state. He's the head of government. And don't we really need to have free and fair elections? And sure, there was a self-serving motive here, which is to keep him in power. But if he can justify it as, hey, man, I was just doing my job. Isn't he entitled to absolute immunity? No, right? That's obviously not the case. And, and we'll get into why. Uh, Special counsel Jack Smith and others will really dive into why. But again, I just really want to drive this home. 
Donald Trump on Draft Central said, remember, I was not campaigning. The 2020 election was long over. What I was doing was bringing to light the fact that the election was, without question, rigged and stolen as president and commander in chief. It was my duty to do so. If I did not do this, it would have been a, in violation of my oath of office and the take care clause, which requires that the president to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Therefore, I'm entitled to total immunity because that's exactly what I was doing, taking care of our country and guarding it from rigged and stolen elections. Democrats are willing to play a far different game. They're willing to cheat at levels I've never seen before. Uh, as Republicans against Trump point out, I'm entitled to total immunity. The corrupt former president wants immunity because it was his, quote, duty to try to overturn the results of an election that he clearly lost. Good luck with that in court. Because again, the evidence is very clear. He has no evidence that the 2020 election was rigged and stolen. In fact, the evidence suggests to the contrary, right? Consistently, audit after audit after audit, forensic audit after audit after audit, every election scholar, every Trump official who dove into this concluded that the 2020 election was free, fair, and not stolen. Joe Biden was the legitimate winner. But Donald Trump is saying, well, if I think it was stolen, and as the head of state and head of government, I have the duty to you know, make sure that elections are not stolen and to take care of the laws be executed, I can do whatever I want. I get a blank check. And again, that'd be dangerous enough if coming from Trump, except it's not just coming from Trump. It's coming from people, uh, just in prominent right wingers in general. So this is Mark Levine or Levin, you know, a major uh, Fox propagandist. And he's trying to, you know, add some scholarly buff to this. He's like, listen, President Ford, Gerald Ford's pardon of former President Nixon in 1974 does not create some binding constitutional precedent. Indeed, I would argue it's unnecessary. This is important. A president is immune from post-presidential prosecution for his actions as president because otherwise presidential immunity from prosecution is a fiction. A president cannot be sure if a future administration will charge him for acts taken while he was president, which can clearly hamper his decision-making while president. It is a crucially important principle that exceeds any interest in criminally pursuing an ex-president. So Mark Levin a major conservative thought leader and a, a staple on the Fox propaganda network is taking the position that, again, anything a president does while in office entitles that president to absolute immunity from post-presidential prosecution because otherwise they couldn't do their job. If you don't have presidential immunity, can presidents even do their job? Of course that was what the founders intended when they created the damn job in the first place. They had just escaped the yoke of a distant monarch who was above the law. We've talked about this. Under British law, the sovereign, the king or the queen, when Elizabeth was on the throne and now Charles, they are technically legally above the law because under the British constitution, the sovereign is the source of law, right? So that's why it's called Her Majesty's government or His Majesty's government. It belongs to the king. It belongs to whoever's sitting on the throne. They are above the law. They are absolute immu absolutely immune. It's called sovereign immunity. Now, there is some very limited degree of that for the sitting president, right? Because you shouldn't be able to throw frivolous lawsuits or prosecutions against a sitting president. That would hamper the job. But it's not an absolute blank check and it doesn't follow you and it shouldn't follow you for the rest of your life because otherwise that makes you a king. That makes you a monarch. That makes you the very thing the founders didn't want you to be in the first place. And since conservatives love and venerate the founders, that should be their logic. But this is how cultish they are. Again, it's not just Mark Levin. You have Tom Fitton, okay? Now, this is a guy who uh, – he's not a lawyer, but he is the founder of quote-unquote Judicial Watch, uh, very bizarrely named. But he thinks he has – he thinks he has a point here. Read this. He says, if Trump can be prosecuted, so can Obama. Yeah. Yeah, if President Obama committed a crime while in office – he shouldn't be entitled to absolute lifetime presidential immunity, and he should be prosecutable if he committed a crime. And so the replies in this are hilarious. Other people are pointing out, oh, of course he can, but the prerequisite would be for to commit a crime, you moron. Exactly. No one is above the law. This is why Trump is being prosecuted for committing crimes and his claim for immunity is laughable. Mr. B, yes, your point. I mean – they they think they think that's an own guys. They think that like uh, okay, well if uh, if our guy did something criminal is prosecuted, then your guy if that if your guy did something criminal, he should be prosecuted too. Yes, because we're not a cult. We make that exception. We have no problem for that. We believe uh, that every president, Democrat or Republican, if they broke the law, they should be prosecutable after they leave office. Um, 
this is a CNN uh, legal correspondent. I think it's Tom Eisen, Norm Eisen, Norm Eisen, uh, describing some of this. All right, um, Norm, you have the special counsel pushing back on Trump's claim of absolute immunity in a new filing. What do you think about this? Uh, the uh, Trump absolute immunity claim is a very tough argument for him to win. And Jack Smith hammers him with all the weaknesses of that claim in this new filing. There's nothing in the Constitution, not its text, its structure, its, his, its history. There's no precedent. There's no case law for this kind of absolute immunity. Smith nails him on getting into the Oval Office would be like a get out of jail free card to commit any crime you wanted. Yes, that's exactly what it would do. Now, of course, Republicans don't care at the moment because as far as they're concerned, well, it's just their guy involved. Of course, they would never accept it, nor should they. They would never imagine at the height of the Obama derangement syndrome, which plagued the Fox propaganda network, people like Mark Levin and Tom Fitton and others. Imagine if President Obama had made this argument and made it with the, the blatant disregard for constitutional norms. If Barack Obama said, I am above the law, I'm entitled to absolute lifetime immunity from civil uh, liability and criminal prosecution, imagine how they would react. They'd be, they'd be wanting to secede from the union. And again, understandably so, because no president, Democrat or Republican should be entitled to this. I'm going to read a couple more things. So this is an excerpt from a New York Times article. A friend of the court brief from former government officials said Trump's position had sweeping and absurd consequences, noting that a great many officials are subject to impeachment. Under the defendant's interpretation, the brief said the executive would lack power to prosecute all current and former civil officers for acts taken in office unless Congress first impeached and convicted them. That would permit countless officials to evade criminal liability. Because Trump also made the slightly narrower but still audacious argument, a president who is acquitted by the Senate cannot be prosecuted for the acquitted conduct. So what he's saying is, listen, I was impeached for a lot of this stuff and I was acquitted. I wasn't found – you know, I wasn't convicted. Therefore, double jeopardy applies, right? That you can't, you can't go after me in a criminal legal setting for something for which I was acquitted in a political impeachment. That doesn't hold – that does not wash at all. Um, Let's see. There is a um, there's a pretty good legal article here, electionlawblog.com. Um, uh, let's see. The most important 2024 case for future presidential elections will likely be the final decision on appeal about whether former President Trump has immunity from criminal prosecution for his attempts to subvert the 2020 election results. Um, Actually, I'm going to skip that and go straight to the brief, the response filed by Jack Smith himself. He said, the implications of the defendant's uh, broad immunity theory are sobering. In Trump's view, a court should treat a president's criminal conduct as immune from prosecution as long as it takes the form of correspondence with a state official about a matter in which there's a federal interest, a meeting with a member of the executive branch, or a statement on a matter of public concern. That approach, Trump's approach, would grant immunity from criminal prosecution to a president who accepts a bribe in exchange for directing a lucrative government contract to the payer. A president who instructs the FBI director to plant incriminating evidence on a political enemy. A president who orders the National Guard to murder his most prominent critics. Or a president who sells nuclear secrets to a foreign adversary because in each of these scenarios, the president could assert he was simply executing laws or communicating with the Department of Justice or discharging his powers as commander in chief or engaging in foreign diplomacy. Under the defendant's framework, the nation would have no recourse to deter a president from inciting his supporters during a State of the Union address to kill op opposing lawmakers, thereby hamstringing any impeachment proceeding to ensure that he remains in office unlawfully. Such a result would severely undermine the compelling public interest in the rule of law and criminal accountability. Folks, this is insane. It's absolutely insane what is coming out of Donald Trump, his attorneys, the MAGA cult in general, the modern iteration of the Republican Party. And again, as a general principle, you should ask yourself, what if the shoe is on the other foot? How would we expect Republicans, Trump, Trump's attorneys, the MAGA cult respond if Joe Biden made this argument? Or if, um, I don't know, uh, Barack Obama or anybody else? I mean, it's super gross, right? This is something 
that I said in response to Levin, I said, this is genuinely unhinged, fascistic, and profoundly anti-American. Levin, one of Fox News' most influential personalities, thinks that a president must be immune from post-presidential prosecution in order for the office to function as intended. He literally thinks the founders he supposedly reveres intended for the president of the United States to be a monarch above legal consequences. That's what they think. When it comes to Donald Trump, when it comes to Donald Trump, he should be above the law, should be above the Constitution because he's Donald Trump. That's super gross. It's dangerous. It's authoritarian. It's unpatriotic. It's anti-American. And we should mock it relentlessly because they would never apply that standard if a shoe is on the other foot. And as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll leave you with this because, my God, it's been 15 minutes and I'm rambling. Consider this. If what Donald Trump says is true, then President Biden could do a lot of things to inconvenience Donald Trump, could take away his liberty, could order Donald Trump to be abducted and put on a, you know, somewhere, right? Or, you know, um, uh, just unlawfully jailed and put on a, like a CIA black site or something like that. President Biden could just try to stay in power no matter what. And President Biden could invoke the Insurrection Act and seize election. He, he could do whatever he want because you can't criminally prosecute or hold civilly accountable a sitting president doing things while they're president, right? Wouldn't that logic apply to President Biden? And shouldn't conservatives and Republicans fear the consequences if that's true? Food for thought. Let me know what you think in the comments.